All right, Pat, I tracked you down at the Orlando Summer League, got, got you out here. Uh, how, how's your summer been going and what's been going on for you? Well, the thing is, you know, coming off this injury, I have to make sure I'm not rushing, taking my time, you know. Now that I have so much time on my hands, just to focus on getting healthy right now, I uh, can't do too much, can't, you know, be too slow with it, but just, just take my time one day at a time. Where are you at in your, in your recovery, and are you close to re resuming basketball activity? I think I'm seven months and about 20, I think 26 days out of surgery, and uh, I'm, I'll give myself maybe a month and a half when I'm cleared to play, because uh, the, the protocol is your your uh, recovering leg needs to be 90% of the strength of your your strong leg. So I'm I'm getting there, but I'm not I'm not I won't be as explosive until probably November mm -hmm. as I was before. You know, obviously coming off a huge injury like that, it can be pretty devastating. But you know, we're you and I are friends on everywhere Instagram, Facebook, <laughs> all that. Snapchat. I, I think the the overwhelmingly thing that I've noticed is that you, you've kept a pretty positive attitude through the whole thing. How, how important is that in your you know road back to, to keep that mentality? Well, the thing with um, having an injury like this is people don't tell you. Uh, you have so much. You already have free time as a basketball player, but you have so much more free time with an injury. Uh, so having people around you to keep, uh, keep you occupied, to um, help you stay busy, stay positive through all the process, it, it, it's, you know, it's everything. Because if you're just thinking about, oh, I, I could be doing this, could be doing that, I should be here and there, thinking about things you have no control over, it's going to eat you alive. So you can't, you can't allow that to affect the present moment that you can enjoy with your friends and family and people around you. And, and another thing I've noticed is if you're not here in Orlando, you're back home in Jacksonville or even in Greece, you're always in the gym working out. How important is that for, for your recovery as well? Well, I just love working out. And, uh, you know, it, it, it gives it me that, like it. <laughs> <laughs> believe it or not, I don't train. I really don't train upper body. It just, it just, <laughs> it just doesn't go away. It's, it's, that's what I tell. It just, it just stays like this. Uh, well, he, the number one thing that I've I learned growing up is that you can have talent, but if you don't have a work ethic to back up that talent, it, it'll only get you so far. And, you know, same with being an athlete and coming to basketball. You can be an athlete in basketball and jump really high and do certain things really well that are hustle. But it's, it's only a, it's a small niche of guys that can do that in, in, at the top level. You need to be able to, you know, make some hook shots, uh, you know, be confident with the ball in your hand that you're not going to turn it over, uh, things like that. So it's, it's important that I, that I can build my confidence uh, outside of just being an athlete. So if that's taken away from me, I can bring something else to the game. You know, I'm pretty familiar with your game and, and what you can do, but for those that maybe don't know, what, what is it that, that Patrick Young brings to uh, an NBA team or even your team overseas right now? Well, what I was bringing to my team overseas, I, I finally was able to figure out my role. Uh, I struggled a little bit at first, you know, new team, completely new team, new players, new teammates, all this new situation. Um, what I was able to do was just realize, Pat, you're stronger than 95% of everyone in in this league, even though you're undersized, an undersized center. So what I was able to do was just, you know, kill people with my energy, running the floor, sealing guys into the basket. Um, I was averaging two and a half blocks a game as well, something I, I've had, I've, never been able to do in my career as far as, you know, maintaining that. So uh, being able to do that and on defensively in the, in the pick and roll situation and post defense, guys weren't scoring on me. So uh, I was able to be an anchor for my team while I was on the court. How was that transition to, to over in Greece? You know, obviously you, you played at Florida yeah. and, and here you're, you're in the summer league. Uh, but how, how was the, the transition going over to a completely new country? Well, I was in the NBA, you know, I was with the Pelicans at first, and then going over to, from the Pelicans to, with Monty Williams, another excellent coach, great man as well from Billy Donovan, uh, to a situation where I realized I was a little spoiled. <laughs> I was a little spoiled because I was kind of on my own in the sense of, uh, you know, I hate to say it, scouting, um, <laughs> understanding whether to, to pick a role or, you know, do this or that, how to play pick and roll defense. So... With what they, I was taught in the past of, you know, being able to make sure I prepare myself the right way from Coach Donovan and Coach Monty, it, it helped me tremendously that, you know, once I finally figured things out, I was able to flourish on the court. What's the competition level like over there? You know, obviously we, we hear the NBA is a top level. Yeah. Even college, you're at Florida and the SEC is a very strong conference. What's what's the, the, the competition like over there? Well, there's, Even though, I mean, yeah. you played for a limited time. Well, there's no question that, uh, the NBA is obviously more athletic than 
players overseas, but players overseas, they are so much, uh, they, they, they are very knowledgeable of their bodies and how to draw fouls, uh, what they do well. They uh, understand their roles. Um, just, if you just, if, if someone could watch uh, one great game of, you know, Real Madrid versus um, Barcelona or against Fenerbahce or one of these teams like that, you would see how these teams uh, play basketball so well. It's not so much one on one. Not guys not really taking bad shots. You know, stopping the fast break. It's, it's just it's fun to watch. I mean, of course you hate when someone's stopping the fast break on you because uh, you know I like to dunk or whatnot. But uh, it's beautiful basketball to watch. And, and you mentioned that it's a little different. And, and th do you think that adds elements to your game that maybe you didn't have before? Well, you got to look at the, look at the Spurs and the success they have had. They they've sent plenty of guys overseas, and those guys have been able to turn their games around or, or add more to their game understanding, you know, just the X's and O's of basketball. Because that's, that's what I would say uh, basketball in Europe is more of guys um, understanding the playbook better and executing a lot better as well. So, uh, yeah, it can help your game tremendously. Uh, obviously, you're a Florida guy. played under Billy Donovan, as you, as you mentioned. What, mm -hmm. what was your reaction to seeing his success in, in year one? Obviously, yeah. things in year two are going to be a lot different right. with KD out. But what would you make of him in his first year? And, and is that, was that something that surprised you, or did you expect this from your own coach? Well, I wasn't able to keep up with him as much, but I was able to uh, keep up with his wife. Um, you know, we had a close relationship. Um, you know, she was always bringing us guys uh, cookies and all the goods and, and whatnot. So she was telling me at first for him it was a learning experience, obviously. But he was, you know, Coach Donovan is a very humble guy, and I wasn't surprised to see the success he was able to achieve. But knowing Coach Donovan, he wanted to win it all. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, sad that he wasn't able to, you know, get to that championship game. But I believe in him. You know, it's tough. It's going to be tough, you know, losing Kevin Durant. Those guys are going to have to, you know, shift a few things around. But mm -hmm. I know they have the right the right guy at the head coaching position to, to get things turned around. And, and last one for you. You know, we see the, the free agency this summer, what's going on, everything. We see the market for big men is still very alive and active. You know, th does that give you some motivation to, to get back your recovery and then put – put down the best basketball you can this upcoming season? Uh, duh. <laughs> I'm not even going to say any names. You guys see the contracts that are being signed for the uh, subpar production of some players. But, you know, if I can take care of my business and, and do my job, and, you know, I pray, pray that I can stay healthy. You know, I have no control over that. But, um, you know, we'll see if I can finish out a full season healthy in Europe and uh, hopefully bring my team, Olympiacos, to the championship. Then hopefully it can, you know, do me wonders to come back to the NBA.